What does it mean to be dominant? I've played at the highest level. I've received the highest award. Thank you. But those things did not make me dominant. On this show, I want to interview people from various backgrounds and careers to see what made them dominant. That's why I decided to partner up with Mission Bueno. Together, we want to promote progress and achievement while sharing real stories of struggle and success. We want to acknowledge the challenges in front of us, but we also want to pivot towards improvement and positivity. Everything is going to work out. We are the dominant ones. We dunk on the world. We don't let the world dunk on us. Oh, I was at a, I was at the game. I was a Knicks fan when I was oh, growing up, and I was at the <laughs> game with Charles Smith with the, the pump fake, pump fake, and Horace Grant, Scotty Pippen, and Jordan. All, and I just those guys just drove me. I mean, hard to call those the three of those guys villains. Reggie mm. Miller, oof, was a villain. For oh, a he while. was definitely a villain. Hat on top, cause we think excellent. Frames on straight, cause I see excellent. Dress for success, cause I be excellent. Everything we do, everything we do. Steven, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming. Man. I appreciate it. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, Thank man. You. And just want to kind of talk about your life and what really got you into acting. Um, when was the first moment you knew that you were going to be an actor, or that's what the road you the road you want to go down? That's what you wanted to pursue. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I sort of, I kind of backed into it in, mm -hmm. a, in a weird way. I was always the kid who kind of like took everything apart. Like, you know, I would mm -hmm. sit there with the remote control on it would mm -hmm. be in pieces and I'd have the batteries out. And mm -hmm. I was always the guy who was like, I wanted to figure out how everything worked. Mm -hmm. um, and in some way that always made me not want to do one thing mm -hmm. with my life. I wasn't the guy who was like, I'm going to be a doctor and just do that all the time. So I, I knew that when I grew up, I wanted to do something that allowed me to always do a million different things. Mm -hmm. And somehow acting always, to me, was about like, okay, for six months, you're living this life. And then you learn all about what it means to do that. And then two weeks, you're on this show and you learn all what it is to be that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it seemed to just fit my mindset in terms mm -hmm. of like, how I like to live. What in life. age did you realize that? <sighs> Probably wasn't until college, really. Mm -hmm. I'd done a lot of theater. My brother uh, and I both we used when we were kids. We used to always play in the basement and pretend mm -hmm. we were, you know, we were movie stars or whatever. And we were sort of sucked in by that kind of a life. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the shows in high school, and I got a lot of attention from doing shows in high school. So the attention was always cool and mm -hmm. good to do. And um, I got to college. This is maybe a the moment um and i remember taking it i was a drama major or i wasn't a drama major yet but i was taking a drama ma uh, i was taking a class in the drama department mm -hmm. and i remember i was working on some project and i looked up at the clock and the clock was like one o'clock in the afternoon and i started working on this thing where i had to design a play mm -hmm. and i was working i was working and i looked up again and the clock was like 11 o'clock at night and 10 hours had just flown off the clock and it dawned to me at that moment I was like I knew I had other tests to study for I knew I had other mm -hmm. things I had to do but somehow in two seconds ten hours of my life were just gone with joy sitting there doing this thing and I remember in that moment I thought like anything that makes mm -hmm. the hands of the clock go that fast is the thing I have to do mm -hmm. because what am I going to live my but life that's, like that's, a that, that's so familiar and because anything that you're passionate about it, time doesn't come into play. There was times that I stayed on courts for 12, 13 hours yeah. and didn't realize it. Yeah. And I knew at age 12, believe it or not, age 12, that really? I was going to be a basketball, professional basketball player. I knew it. I just, it was something in me that drove me and pushed me and said, you know, this is going to be something that you're going to be very successful at. 
And, and again, at 12 years old, I mean, most kids that age, I mean, they don't know what they want, but basketball, I knew it. I knew I was going to be a pro. What percentage of your day did you do then? Like, all day. All every day. day. Every day. You know, back when we were coming up, we played playground basketball. Playground basketball was what made you who you are. Yeah. And so growing up in Baltimore, Maryland, that's all I did. And I played against older guys that really taught me the game. And I would look up, it would be 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I hadn't been home yet. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom always knew where I was at. She always knew I was on the court. Because this, cause I remember, i never forget this. I remember telling my mom when I was 12 years old, I remember I was coming home, she was crying, and she just was having a bad day. And I said, what's wrong? She said, well, we don't have anything to eat today. And I remember biblically saying, don't worry, one day I'll make you rich. You will never have to worry about another meal ever again. And she never did from the time I was 12 to the time I was 18, and I bought her first home. I, don't, I can't tell Amazing. you how I did it. I was just, it was just a mindset I had. And you get that, that's incredibly lucky to, mm -hmm. to have the passion be mm -hmm. the thing that's also your drive and, mm -hmm. you know, like put mm -hmm. that all together is like unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's for artists and for people who do sports, mm -hmm. I, it, it's a passion. Mm -hmm. You have to have that fire mm -hmm. um, and it has to drive you because it's too hard. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you've felt that. And, uh, and, everybody, and it, what we do in life, people think it's easy. It's very difficult and it's time consuming and you got to put in the work to even perfect it to the level of say, someone's gonna give you a chance or, an, or be counted on to represent either their team or yep. the show they're trying yep, to, to totally. put together. So they gotta believe in you. And, yep. you know, but more importantly, you gotta believe in yourself and it takes a lot of work. Well, the better you are, the easier it looks, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's easy. It just means oh, you, 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 wouldn't, can... you wouldn't believe how many times people say, man, you, you make it look so easy. And I said, it's not that easy, <laughs> you know, right. if you knew the work I put in. <laughs> right. My brother used to say all the time, he said, Nick, man, I, I got to work hard every year to prepare to play. He said, you can lay off the whole summer, you come out the first day, and you can drop 40. He said, I've never seen anything like that. He said, you're a freak of nature. I'm like, no, it's all the work that I put in that yeah. gave, gave me the ability to do that. Yeah, those building blocks, young. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. When was the moment you knew that you could be a great actor? Right now, when you asked me <laughs> that question, it's been a while. Um, you know, it's interesting, cause, and I'm fascinated to hear you answer that question too. Like mm -hmm. you said 12, was that when yeah, you- 12. You know, wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Because yeah. um, I think for artists, part of the drive for, for us is never knowing that, you, because it's so subjective, and mm -hmm. people are, I wish that you could look at a performance and go like 45 points, nine rebounds mm -hmm. and like quantify it that way. Mm -hmm. But for an actor, like you can be like, that was amazing. I did my best work and they'd be like, we need to do, redo that again because that sucked. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for us, a lot of the times being really, really good is a, and the, the actors that I really love watching their work are the ones who don't think, don't know that they're good but they know that there's something they want to reach for, and so they work extra hard, and there's this fire to try to find a kind of That's, that's funny you say that, because I never looked at myself as the greatest, but I wanted to work hard to become one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. And so that always kept me on my toes, and because when you get to the point when you think you're the best at everything, is that's when, it's in my opinion, you screw up. Mm -hmm. That's when you lose the really, true values of what your, your profession is all about. Because um, even when I play, even when I play, I don't care who I played against, I was always nervous. It could be the weakest opponent or the strongest, it did not matter. Because being nervous prepared me yeah. to play. And so it kept me on my toes, but that's the way I look at it. I never looked at myself that I'm the greatest thing on the court because there's always somebody who can come along to bust your bubble. Yep. <laughs> you know, yeah, so totally. you always have to be prepared. Did you have somebody that when you, that you were like, I, I don't want to play this guy? That is a wonderful question. I'll tell you, I, I've never feared anybody I've ever played against. Not one person. One guy ended up being that guy that 
I couldn't sleep the night before I played against him because I knew he was getting 40. There's nothing I can do about right. it. Nothing I can do about it. It was a guy named Bernard King. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. a machine. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember he asked me to, you know, bring him into the Hall of Fame. He asked the NBA to call me. And I'm like, it wasn't me. We never talked. We never shook hands. He looked at me like I was, you know, I stole his kids or something. I mean, this guy <laughs> was so focused. And I said, and I told him right before I went on, on stage with him, I said, Look, I never feared anybody I've ever played against. And you're the only guy that ever made me nervous. You wouldn't shake my hand. You wouldn't look at me. You'd look through me. And I said, man, I was so nervous. I used to turn around and say, damn, I got to play tonight. <laughs> and he said, Nika, I had to be that way. i like, why? He said, because you scared the hell out of me, too. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm awesome. like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But that was the edge that we had against one another. We had to find that edge to, to keep you off balance. Mm -hmm. Because... It, in basketball, in, in any profession, you're always trying to find the right moment, the right edge to stay above the rest. Yeah. That's how you keep yourself sharp. Yeah. Well, it's like on Billions, you know, the show that, that I'm fortunate enough to do, that company is, of mm -hmm. actors is amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing where mm -hmm. you, any kind of, you know, movement they do, that you have a scene with this person or that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. The level of play is so high amongst that group of actors mm -hmm. that you are just you're forced to be passing. And, and you have some great actors on that show. Yeah, and so you you're know, zipping those yeah, passes. Yeah. That dialogue moves with mm -hmm. that kind of thing because you know you can't be the one who doesn't mm -hmm. nail the show. But that makes you better too when you yeah. when you're there with those type of actors, those kind of players. You know, it, you can't help but get better if you're willing to stay focused and you're yeah. willing to learn and willing to listen. And I think that's the biggest part of any profession, having the ability to actually listen. And learn something because we don't know everything yeah. you know and that's a that's a big part of it and in your role I mean your role is a pretty fun role too you know a very serious guy yeah, but uh, <laughs> why that role why that that role is that something that you felt comfortable with he you know he's you evolved over time because he it, it's been so much fun to watch them and as a group evolve mm -hmm. this guy because he started off as a real serious sort of like mm -hmm. You know, ball buster at the, mm -hmm. from the SEC, mm -hmm. and you know they just sort of picked away some of the layers over time, and we've had a great time. Mm -hmm. Just sort of, he's the guy. He's really connected to what he wants mm -hmm. more, and he's more bald about expressing mm -hmm. it than a lot of other people mm -hmm. are. Um, so, he, and I, I find him endearing. I think some people find Spiros. Mm -hmm completely annoying and terrifying <laughs> right. but i i think he's really knows what he wants and he knows and he wants to be loved a lot mm -hmm. of the time um loved and feared which is a really hard you know duo to try to get in somebody right. yeah. but uh you know it's fun because i don't know that i necessarily i don't necessarily play him for laughs but somebody who lives their life that baldly is can be funny because you're just mm -hmm. like I know he makes people cringe because there are parts of him in all of us. There's part of him in, in everybody mm -hmm. uh, that we try to keep deeply buried. You know, it, it, when looking at the show, I mean, it is a very good show, and I've seen quite a few episodes now. This show has a lot of staying power. You know, it's a really good show, which Thanks. really speaks to the type of talent and creative writing you have on that show it's for it to be as, around as long as it has. And, and you guys always, you know, being innovative and doing some new things with the show and you always have these surprises so mm -hmm. it kind of it kind of prepares you for the next episode you that's know that's great here and so yeah. i've been able to uh watch quite a bit of billions you know and, and it's because now you know i know kelly dollar oh. bill y'all oh, you know oh, <laughs> it's just the so you know and knowing you now man it just makes you want to watch the show even more oh, that's great So you've done great in your role. If you had to go back and tell your younger self something different, what kind of advice would you give them? It's a great question. I think I think I would remind my younger self that it's it is a marathon, it's mm -hmm. not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And that you don't you don't judge yourself based on looking out the window to the right and the left. Mm -hmm. You got your road and you look out the window forward. And our professions are so similar because you got to have a great team. You yeah. got to have a great team to make it all work. Completely. Yeah. That's like driving in New York. 
people are always like, how do you drive in New York? Because you don't look to the sides. You're just mm -hmm. looking, you look that way. You look mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, they do drive crazy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're a little nuts in New York. I'm, even, I'm even scared to drive in New York. No, come on. Oh, I'm telling you, but, but if you had to describe dominance in your life, how would you describe it? I think I would say, for me, watching people be dominant. And I watch it in sports and I watch it in other actors. I think it's about giving yourself permission to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think there are some people that in the moment of the kill, mm -hmm. in the time they're going to take the penalty shot, the free throw, you see it in their eyes and something dims in their eyes. And it's not that they don't have the skill and it's not that they don't have they don't have the, the will to win. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere inside they don't give themselves the permission to be great. Mm -hmm. And for me, dominance are, is somebody who has a direct relationship mm -hmm. with their ability to say, it's okay for me to be the best. Mm -hmm. And when you watch somebody who does that, who steps up to the line and is like, Phew! or kicks the ball in, or somebody who's like, give me the lines in the scene because I'm going to crush this, mm -hmm. and doesn't have that moment behind the eyes where the wavering of like, do I have permission to be great in this mm -hmm. world? Do mm -hmm. I have, am I, am I allow, going to allow myself to seize the day? That, to me, that's dominance. That's, and that's the confidence. That's, that's the confidence, confidence you yep. have in yourself. So yeah, that's, and I think everybody who we've talked to is kind of the same story, you know, really giving yourself permission to be dominant. And, and it's, all, it's not so much about winning and losing, mm -hmm. it's about growing, you know, yep. to be something special. And uh, I can't tell you how, uh, you know, thankful I am. I had a chance to have people around me to help me kind of go along that road, to be a dominant person in my life, to believe that I can do something special. Because I grew up, a lot of people tell me oh, I would never be anything. Oh, I never could do this, I won't be this, I won't be that, and I used it as fuel to prove my wrong. Yeah. And I said, hey, I may not make it, but I'm gonna die trying. So I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. And uh, can't thank you enough. Thank and, you. Thanks for having me. And I look forward to watching more Billions. Thank you. So thanks for the show, it. man. It's a thank great you. show. Thank you. Dominance.